Well, now I want to introduce somebody that hasn't been here before, but I think you're going to enjoy Patrick Cazito, Cazilo, Cazilo uh, who is the youth director for the Lionel Collectors Club of America. I, and Michael, I think that's, that's wonderful that uh, an association is recognizing youth. As far as I know, it's the only association out there that has a youth director. So congratulations. And, and uh, I wish you the best in accomplishing uh, that mission. But Michael's here tonight to talk to us about using magnets and lighting your passenger cars. Well, Michael, welcome. Well, my name is Patrick. <laughs> I'm sorry, Patrick. It's okay. <laughs> I've got it written down. Um, somebody else. I'm that's sorry. That's okay. Uh, my name is Patrick Cazillo. Um, and um, I do a little scratch building. I'm more of a Lionel collector guy. I've got um, Lionels from the 1920s all the way to modern stuff. And I have a high rail layout with Lionel fast track. And um, I kind of, you know, do whatever I kind of want to do. Um, but every once in a while, I pick up a, uh, a model of scratch build. And this is one of my recent ones. Um, there's a guy. It's a, it's a LaBelle kit. I think it's a LaBelle kit. Um, maybe it's a Walters. I think it was the Walters one. Um, it's got the, uh, the big windows in it. It was that, that rail fanning car. And um, the guy's name on the front of his name is Dale Ward. And um, I'm from Indiana. Um, up near Chicago. I'm about a half hour from Chicago. And um, Dale Ward, really quick, he has a huge railroad museum. He passed away last May, um, but he has a few, one of the largest collections in Indiana open to public railroad stuff. So ever find yourself in old Monon, Indiana, you know, take a stop in there and see what, what, what Dale's got in that place. It's crazy what he has. Uh, but anyway, so the topic was um, railroad men. Lighting magnets. So everyone, you know, we always have a car like this. You know, you build it up, and there's always a little issue. How do you get the lighting in there? And normally, you know, you stick the lighting in the roof, and you do the interior. But you want to be able to, you want people to be able to see your interior as well. So how do you do that without having wires everywhere and making just a big old mess? So a friend of mine, I did not develop this, but a friend of mine from Nashville, Tennessee, um, he showed me this project. He was a jeweler. And he, um, he originally came up with this, and I kind of perfected it, I guess, or at least maybe I think I did. Um, but I stuck little magnets inside your standard car. Um, but what I did was I used the magnet. I, I 3D printed. I have a 3D printer. And I 3D printed um, a little hole in this plastic rectangular tower um, to be able to squeeze the magnet down in there. I... <laughs> very difficult. It was very difficult to solder a wire to that magnet. <laughs> um, but I got it to work. Um, and I just used screws on, I put the light system, the light strip on the top of the, um, uh, the roof here. And I just used little screws like that. And that way I can adjust it, um, up or down when you're first putting it on. So it serves two purposes. One, it snaps the roof in there. So it, it holds it in place. Okay. And then the other purpose is it lights it up, obviously. And then when so when you show when, when you want to show someone the interior, you just pick the roof up and you can look into it. No wires and no mess. Okay. Um, the magnets I use, I just went to Menards. If anyone's familiar with Menards, um, called uh, Magnacraft magnets, and it just comes in a tube like this. It's got a tube inside of a tube. And there, I bought a, a container of thirty, um, and the diameter is like point. 375 inches and the length is 0.125 inches i can put that in the chat if you're interested it's a small magnet or any magnet you want would work but it's it, i seem but what works for me is these if they're the rarest metal magnets these these are super duper strong um and they'll stick to just about anything but um but yeah this this really comes in handy and it's a lot neater there's no there's no wires inside the car you can see Okay, all the wires are underneath, and all I did was I just ran the wires underneath, and I hooked it to, you know, I have a three-rail track system, but I hook it to the center hit pickups, and, you know, you run the wires under the car. Um, you can kind of see them there, how I did it. I used black on black, and just made it all kind of work real nice. Uh, this one, this is my, one of my uh, latest ones. Another one of my latest ones is this one here, too. Um, I built another car. It's a 21-inch passenger car called the Pullman Voyager. Um, 
but I did the same thing with this one too. It's a bigger, it's a much longer car. You know, I did the same thing. This one's a little bit, in, this is a little bit earlier variation I did when I was still experimenting with this. And I see, you see, I stuck the magnet in the roof and it is proved that this was not, it works, but it was a pain in the butt because you had to carve out the roof hole. Um, it was just a pain, just a pain in the butt. And then on the inside of the car, this one came out really nice, actually, the inside of this one. Um, but right over here by the classic lady in the shower, <laughs> um, you could see how I did a, I did like a flat metal top on that one. I still 3D printed the tower. I just painted it Pullman green. Um, but I, I use a flat piece of metal on the top. You could do it like that. It works. Um, but it was you really had to be careful and really get your sizing correct where the other one I did, the, um, the Dale Ward car, I used a screw this time. And if it wasn't exactly right, I just adjusted it up and down and it made it work. So it takes a little trial and error. I mean, at least, at least with this one, um, it came out pretty nice. And if you don't have a 3D printer, you know, you could just take just some drill bits in a, in a tall piece of basswood and just drill it out, kind of all it out. Just run a hole all the way straight down the center um, and then run a wire through that, and solder it to that magnet. Um, soldering the magnet, <laughs> um, what I actually used was I just put some, I put a magnet. I tried this and my magnet obviously kept getting sucked in my solder, my solder pencil, pencil tip. Um, what I ended up doing was I just took a, um, pair of uh just a pair of pliers and i just hooked the magnet in there and i hurry up and i you might almost need two people for this just to kind of get the solder on blopped and then um get the wire in there fast enough but i was able to do it myself it took me a couple times to get it just right um but it works once you once you kind of get it to you got to play with it a little bit but um like anything in this hobby it's all trial and error to get it right so um i guess that's kind of it anyone have any questions yes i do Yes. Did you use incandescent lighting or LED lighting? You know, I use incandescent lighting because um, I would rather use LED lighting. Um, but the problem was I bought a collection out and I, oh, I, has a, I have a, a ton of these, these plastic K-line strips for the, all the lights on it. Um, so at some point, I don't run these cars all the time. I rarely run them. So, I mean, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can adjust this to LED lighting too, as long as you have the right, uh, the little circuit board and the um, uh, the capacitor for it and stuff. You can adjust this. This will work with LED lighting as well. Um, so it's versatile like that. But um, but no, I got a whole slew of these things, so I use incandescent lighting since I got a ton of them. Thank you. Yep. The magnets that you put in, you put them in all four corners of the car. You could. Um, that's a little. I thought that was a little overkill. Um, I just did two, kind of one on each end of the car. Um, you see how I just did, like in this one here, I've got one on this end right here. This is the trash can down here. You can't, it's kind of hard to see it. And then on the other end, I got one on the opposite. So I just did two opposites. You could put four in there. I've seen my buddy, my, my jeweler friend in Nashville, he did it. He used to do four, um, and he only would power two. Um you could if you want. I, I just I felt that two was just was just strong enough that I was still experimenting with this. Um, yeah. But but one is positive and one is negative. So that's um, you know obviously that was probably the next question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, Pat Patrick, this is Phil. Just a, a comment. Um, without a three D printer, it probably would be pretty easy. You can buy an evergreen tube that's got a 0.38 interior diameter, yeah. and then put another yeah. smaller tube inside of it, make a stack of two tubes. And just glue the magnet down on the top, and you could build that with two pieces of tubing. So if you don't yeah. have a 3D printer, that's a lot cheaper in a 3D printer probably to buy a couple of pieces of tube. Yeah, you know, I didn't even think about that. Um, but even if you want to get the 3D printing, the prices have gone down on them significantly, and a lot of that stuff is already like pre-made for the most part. Or I actually have the file for it if you want it, I could print it. But but the problem is all these cars are all different sizes and heights, but I have the one I made here is just about the right height for a, for these Walters kits. And that screw there, can you can adjust it up and down and make it work just enough. So um, a little wood screw I stuck in there. But but yeah, the tubing would work just as well. So I mean, whatever works for you. But just the fact that the magnets um, kind of limit all the wire mess and little plugs and, it, you know, you don't have to like try to use a 
use a build a little compartment just to shove all the wire in. Uh, it just makes it a little bit neater and it gives you more more build space essentially for stuff. I think it's a great idea. I had never thought of it, but I think it's a great idea. Yes, yeah, magna lighting, like on Lionel, you know, magna traction, but magna lighting. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Well, Patrick, thank you very much again for being here this evening and sharing this with us. And I wish you the best of luck with your youth program for the LCCA. Thank I you. tried to, I, by the way, I tried to get Patrick to do that for us on our show. And he said, no, I, I've got too much on my plate. I can't do two of them. So no, if, I, that, if that ever changes, keep us in mind. I, I definitely will. I also, I'm a, I'm a high school teacher and I work night school and that, you know, I just kind of the only things on my plate. End of the school year, I got like three weeks of school left and I'm ready to, <laughs> I'm ready to check out here. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so very much. So, and anytime you want to come back with another tip, just let me know. I will. I'll let you know. Thank you. All right. Thank you.